Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to create and configure a RAID array based on server ProLion DL380P G8 with the help of an integrated utility HP Smart Storage Administrator, and how to recover data from a damaged RAID system based on P410 controller. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. HPE Smart Storage Administrator is a tool that lets you quickly configure storage controllers on HP ProLine servers and manage them. This utility has a simple and user-friendly graphical interface to help you quickly create, modify and remove storage arrays based on a set of physical disks installed in the server. Smart Storage Administrator comes to replace the HP Array Configuration Utility ACU for short, and features an updated database that expands your storage opportunities. Our server has a built-in controller for 8 disks, and it supports RAID 0, 1, 5, 10, 15, and 16. In a few minutes, I'll show you how to use it to create a RAID 5 array consisting of 3 disks. For illustration purposes, we'll explore how to configure it using the utility with the graphical interface, and then how to install the operating system onto this disk array. Restart or turn on the server. While it is booting, after the ILO configuration is displayed and when the information on the RAID controller is showing, press F5 key to start the graphical interface of HP Smart Storage Administrator. In the GRUB window, select the Smart Storage Administrator from the list and hit Enter. Wait until the utility boots and click on Smart Array in the main screen. In the Smart Array menu, find Actions, select the Configure option, and then Create Array. If the disks have already been used in another RAID system, the Create button will be unavailable, so you need to remove the previously created disk array first. To do it, open the tab Logical Devices, select the RAID you want to remove, and click Delete Array. Then hit Yes to confirm your decision, and then click Finish. If necessary, the disks that have been used before can be overwritten with zeros. If you want it, open the tab Unassigned Drives, select the disk, and select Erase Drive below. Choose an erase pattern then click OK and Yes to confirm it. Now you can create a new array and you can do it right from this menu by selecting all the disks and clicking Create Array or by opening the tab Smart Array and then clicking Create Array there. Select the disks that your array will consist of and click Create Array. Now it is time to give RAID level, strip size, and the array size. Choose if you want to use all the space you have or set a custom size. The option Sectors Track uh, gives the number of sectors that make up every track. The value 32 disables Max Boot, while 63 enables it, which reduces performance of the logical volume. Caching can improve performance by writing data into the cache memory instead of writing it directly to the logical disks. Now select the initialization method, the default one or the longer one that involves overwriting blocks with zeros. When you're finished with the settings, click Create Logical Drive, check the settings and then click Finish to complete the process. The new array should appear in the left-hand panel of the main window.
to ensure uninterrupted work even if one of the disks breaks down. You can add a spare disk before you finish the configuration process. To do it, click Manage Spare Drives, select a disk in the next window, and click Save. to have the spare drive added. Here are the three disks that make up the RAID and the fourth disk, which is used as a spare one. Now, if one of the disks fails, the controller will rebuild the array with the spare disk and inform you that one of the disks should be replaced. To exit the application, click the Close button, and you'll be redirected to the Intelligent Provisioning screen. In this window, click the Power button in the upper right corner and then the Reboot button. After that, boot the operating system and partition the disk. If you need to install an operating system, use another integrated utility – Intelligent Provisioning. To start it, press F10 key while the server is booting. Choose Configure and Install. Continue. And select the operating system family from the drop down list. Then choose the installation method and specify the resource with the installation disk. Give the path to the image of the operating system. Continue. Choose your settings. Give your login. and administrative password. Continue. The system will warn you that all the data will be lost. Click Continue and wait until the installation is over. From the menu of this program, you'll be able to start Smart Storage Administrator, update the controller's firmware, and install an operating system. The standard installation process begins, so just follow the wizard directions. Also, with this server, you can create a RAID array with the controller's bias. In one of the previous videos, I showed how to create a RAID based on an HP controller. This device type has a similar menu for configuring disk arrays. You can learn more by following the link in the description. To start ORCA, which stands for Option ROM Configuration for Arrays, press F8 key. Click Create a logical drive and specify the settings. If the RAID system is damaged, a hard disk is out of order, the operating system crashed, or some data was removed by mistake, you can always use Hetman RAID Recovery to get your files back. In case of accidentally removing data, just install this program to the server running a Windows operating system, scan the disk array, and restore the deleted files. Right-click on the disk and open it. Select the scan type and wait until it's over. Select the deleted files and click Recovery. Choose the folder where you'd like to save the files and click Recover again. When the recovery process is complete, you will see all the files in that folder. If the operating system on the disks within the array is damaged, you won't be able to extract the data so easily. But still, 
All you need is to connect them to a Windows computer. and start Hetman Read Recovery. The program will scan the disk automatically, read all the information about the disk array, and then rebuild it. The final step is to scan it and recover everything you need. If the program failed to rebuild the RAID system, or it rebuilt the array in the wrong way, you can always do it manually. If you know the order of the disks that were included into the array, the block size, block order, and other important data, just open RAID Constructor and build it according to this information. To rebuild an array manually, open RAID Constructor, choose Manual mode, and give all the RAID settings you know. RAID type, block order, block size, number of disks in the array, then add the disks, and specify their order. When you filled in in every field, click Add, and the array will appear in the Drive Manager. Scan the array and recover your data. This program even lets you recover data if one of the disks is missing, if the RAID type can survive this kind of damage. As you can see, the program managed to find all the data in spite of one disk missing, just because this is RAID 5. You can find more information in one of our videos about different RAID levels and peculiarities of data storage by following the link below. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.